Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'll explain how to get or set the names of a data object using the names function in the R programming language. In the video I'm going to show you two examples and the first example is based on the vector object that we can create with the line one of the code. So if you run this line of code you will see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object appears. And we can also have a look at this vector by running line two of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our example vector is simply ranging from one to five. What you also can see is that this vector does not contain any names. So if we want to add such names to this vector, we can apply the names function as you can see in line four of the code. So in this line of code, I'm first specifying the names function and within the names function, I'm specifying the name of our vector object. And then I'm assigning to this the names that I want to store in my vector object. So in this case, I'm simply specifying that I want to assign the first five letters of the alphabet. At this point, you have to make sure that the vector of names that you want to assign to our vector object has the same length as the vector itself. So in this case, our vector object has a length of five. And for that reason, we are using the first five letters of the alphabet. So if you run line four of the code, you will see that our vector is updated. And we can also have a look at this updated vector by running line five of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console, that our vector still consists of the same values, but each of these values has a name. So until now I have shown you how to assign names to a vector object using the names function. However, you can also apply the names function for a different task. And this is if you want to know the names of a data object. And this is what I'm showing in line seven of the code. So if you want to get the names of a data object, you simply have to apply the names function to the data object of which you want to know the names. So if you run line seven of the code, you can see that at the bottom of the RStudio, a vector is returned and this vector is consisting of the names of our vector object. So in this first example, I have shown you how to apply the names function to vector objects. However, it is also possible to apply the names function to lists. And this is what I want to show you in the second example of this video. So in this example, I'm using the list that we can create with the lines nine to 11 as basement. So if you run lines nine to 11 of the code, you will see that at the top right of RStudio, a new list object is created. And we can also have a look at this list by running line 12 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our list consists of three list elements. And in each of these list elements, we have stored different data objects. What you also can see is that the list elements of our list are not named yet. So if we want to assign names to our list elements, we can use the names function as I have shown you in the first example of the video. So as you can see in line 14 of the code, we are applying the names function to our list object. And then we are assigning to this a vector of names. So in this case, we are using the first three uppercase letters of the alphabet. So if you run line 14 of the code, our list is updated and we can have a look at our updated list by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that now our list elements are named alphabetically. If we want, we can then also apply the names function to get the names of our list, as you can see in line 17 of the code. So if you run line 17 of the code, the names function returns the names of our list to the RStudio console. So in this video, I have shown you how to apply the names function to get or set the names of a data object in the R programming language. However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. And I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you could check it out there. And if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.